This slide will work through a posting process example, and it will help me to indicate why we use subsidiary ledgers and special journals, which is the topic of this particular video. Imagine we start the month with a debit of $35,000 of cash, debit of $15,000 of accounts receivable, credit of $50,000 of retained earnings, and a credit of consulting revenue of zero. If we were to then take these general journal entries and post them into their general ledger accounts, we could compute the balance of each individual ledger account. Let's do that. On January 8th, a sale on account of $8,000 was made to customer B. By posting that to their respective accounts, we could then compute the new balance for total receivables and total consulting revenue. January 17th, a sale on account of $10,000 to customer A. We then posted that to the ledger accounts. January 20th, we collected $3,000 from customer A and posted that to the receivables and cash account. We then made a sale of $9,000 on account to customer B and posted that to the respective accounts. We then collected $7,000 from customer C and posted that to the respective ledger accounts. We can now compute the balance in each of these accounts. Cash has a debit of $45,000. That indicates that we're holding $45,000 of cash to be used in the future. Accounts receivable had $42,000 of debits, thus increasing receivables, and $10,000 of credits, thus reducing receivables, arriving at a balance of a debit of $32,000, indicating how much all of the customers still owe the company as of January 31st. Retained earnings stays at a $50,000 credit because the closing process has not yet been performed. All the temporary accounts, in this case consulting revenue, still have their balances and have not yet been closed into retained earnings. Therefore, this credit balance of $50,000 is actually the January 1st balance, which will need to be updated through the closing process. Consulting revenue has a credit of $27,000. That's what you're used to. We record entries in the general journal and post to the ledger. That's the posting process that I've introduced so far. We record entries in the general journal and post to the general ledger and determine the new balances, which will be used on the trial balance. Let's now ask a few questions. How much is receivable from customer B as of the end of January? We really don't know. We do know that all of our customers owe us $32,000, but we don't know the breakout between customer A, B, or C. But what if we had a sub-ledger for each customer, the total of which were $32,000? would not that be a little more helpful? That way we could track the balance receivable from each individual customer. Let's look at it. 